Today on This Week in iPad, we have special guest Marco Arment, plus I have an iPad Game of the Week review, and apparently everyone is suing everyone in the mobile business. Welcome to This Week in iPad. As you can see, I am not Lon Harris. I am Andrea easily, Renee. I could be easily <laughs> deceived. You, you could. I mean, our Halloween. hair color is yeah. kind of the same, yeah. but I'm missing the telltale beard. Yeah, uh, you know? yeah, a few other things probably. You know, too, so. it would have probably been funny if I'd come on with like a fake beard and then I like ripped it off. Yeah, maybe Shucks. next time. Next time. Oh, no, I have an idea. I will dress as Lon for Halloween. There, for and this he can dress as you. He'll wear a little <laughs> yellow jacket that's. Cabbage I know. Pack. I like yeah. my. Everyone was making fun of me for my little yellow jacket, but I like it. You know, it's so dark in here. I had to give us a little pop of color. I guess. So, well, how are you doing today, Jacob? Good. We geeks like the dark, so it's it's all right. I'm excited. I've been hyping up Insta Paper since episode two, I think. So yes, uh, the very, fact that we got, I get to talk to Marco guest, yeah. is uh, super excited. Um, I'm I'm ecstatic, and I get to lead the interview for once. Uh, now that Lon's here, I can actually take the reins on an interview, and I'm excited that it gets to be someone as impressive as Marco. So. Absolutely. I'm definitely looking forward to hearing what he has to say as well. And he's coming up a little bit later in the show. If you guys miss it in the cold open, Marco Arment is our guest today. He is the creator of Instapaper and co-founder of Tumblr. Hopefully you all know who he is out there, but if you don't, by the end of the show, you will definitely know. But I want to go ahead and get into our first uh, tag out or shout out or highlight whatever kind of word you want to use for one of our awesome sponsors. We of course love the sponsors here at this weekend, especially at this weekend iPad. And our first sponsor I want to talk about is Hover. Now, what? if you guys don't know about Hover, it's this really cool site. I'm going to pull it up right here on my computer. If you guys want to take a look at it, I'm sure you guys have seen this. Uh, Lawn talks about it all the time. You have a domain you got from Hover, correct? I bought my .me account. I have owned jacobbirch.net and .com. I finally got my .me because it's only five dollars, and it's even less than less than that if you go to twi.hover.com. Use a promo code TWIIP. Yeah, I got it right. Um, That's right. Point being, uh, it was five dollars and super, super, super easy. I've used other registrars, some who are famous and use famous race car drivers as a thing, where it's checkbox, checkbox, uncheck this, check that, and a really long, complicated process. It was super easy with Hover. Uh, really glad with the experience. Well, you know, I have my own website, but I don't have dot me. I have andrearenee.com and <laughs> andrearenee.info, which is just like a blank. Because I didn't get .com right away, but I think I need to get AndreaRenee.me. And now you have the service to I do, do it. I do, and if you guys didn't remember, you can get 10% off of your domain purchase from Hover with our promo code, as Jacob said, T-W-I-I-P. So make sure you write that down because, I mean, who doesn't want to save a yeah. few bucks? And just go to TWI.hover.com and you'll, I think, still see Lon's face. He'll still it be is, there right haunting here. you. You can see his face and in our little video And it'll put the promo here. code in there easy enough for you. Um, but in using it, I had to set up advanced DNS. Actually, I don't think I've done that yet, but I have to set up a redirect. That was super easy. Setting up, you know, my own little zone records and A records and MX records, super easy. Uh, private registration was free, which is almost always added on any yeah, other registrar. Yeah, no, with my so. other domain, I had to pay extra to be private. I do not want people to know where I live. Thank you very much. You know, that's what P.O. boxes are for, Jacob. Come on. No, thanks. No? I'd have to go to the post office. I don't want to do that. That's me out. true. And to stand on those long lines. and yeah. you have to, It's just one more key you have to hold on to. So I hear you there. But... Uh, Hooray for privacy. Hover is in charge. So if you need a domain name, go to hover.com. TWI.hover.com. Super, and we can't stress, it's clean and simple. So go use it. Absolutely. All right, so we're going to go ahead and just jump right into the show. First up is the iPad game of the week. And I am a huge gamer. As some of you may know, I host another show at this network called This Week in Video Games. It's right after this show. And um, this new game that I've been playing... I literally have been playing it nonstop since I bought it. And um, I spent five hours one day just like posted up on my couch playing this game. It's called Fiona's Flowers. Now it's brand new, it came out about a week ago. It um, is another amazing HD game. That's one of the beauties of the iPad is that it has HD. Let me turn my volume down here. Don't want it up too loud. 
It's from a company called Chilingo, who you may or may not know about. Here, let me get this set up here. The thing that's really fun about this game, it's a time management game, kind of like Ranch Rush. I, I don't know if anyone out there has played Ranch Rush. Um, but the really cool thing about this game versus that game is that it's, it's kind of pretty. It's all flowers and planting flowers and grapevines and things. And the graphics are really cool. The, the one big gripe that I have with this game <laughs> is that the cutscenes <laughs> are long and they're really, really cheesy. <laughs> like super, super cheesy <laughs> cutscenes. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and do restart story. Or, or go to cut. I'll just show you. Look at you can even choose to watch the cutscenes by themselves. So what we'll do is we'll do the intro so you can see the cheesiness of the cutscenes. <laughs> but the it is cool that they have a skip button. Um, let me back this up so you guys can see it. There's a skip button at the top here, which you still can't see. And my reflection. <laughs> this is what I want to watch. I know, right? You, you like turn it on and you're like, okay, that's awesome. So we're just going to ahead and skip right at past the cutscene. And so I will go back and show you. So let me give you a little demo of some of the gameplay. Like I said, it is a, a time management game. The whole um, purpose of the game is you are this woman, Fiona, and she has to make different kinds of hybrid flowers. And she is in a contest, and you want to obviously win the contest, and then you win this like farm that's like the first prize. So basically what you do is you dig gardening patches like this. You can dig them wherever you want, all over. And then you plant seeds. Pretty simple, right? It's kind of reminds me a little bit of Farmville or like Stim Farm, something like that. But it's more challenging. The challenging part about it is, is as you can see with some of my flowers here, you have to prune the flowers, you have to water the flowers, you have to put pesticides on the flowers. You have to pollinate them with beehives. You have to then cut them and sell them. And customers come in with orders, and so they're like, well, I want three of this kind of flower or five of this kind of flower, and then you have to grow those specific flowers for each order. And, of course, it's timed. It's all time-sensitive, hence the time right. management part of the game. And what's really kind of fun about it and addicting is that the more you play, it's like you just keep playing because you want to, like, you don't, I don't know. I'm not communicating effectively <laughs> here and how much how addicting this game is, but people who like time management well, I, games will understand. I think understand. a lot of those time, any of the, like, far, like explain Farmville or We Rule to your friends and you're like, why are you spending hours on this thing? Yeah, and yeah, a, and exactly. I think a, and I think a lot of games on the iPad, period, are like that. Because no one quite has sort of the words to explain how a touch interface works. So you try and explain, no, it's really, really fun. But at the same time, you give it to them. And within five minutes, they're, they're into it and they get it, as opposed to, say, a console game where they have to sort of figure, there's 20 minutes of figuring the control scheme out first. Absolutely. And it's really interesting that you bring that up because one of my other favorite games who you guys have talked about on the show before was Plants vs. Zombies for the iPad. And now they've just, just made it. Just about everyone's, yeah. Yeah, they made an <laughs> Xbox version of it. And I tried to explain to people, I was like, no, but you don't get it. Half of the fun of the game is... Touching. The fact that you're touching the yeah, screen. Yeah, it was a computer game first, but it was fun, but not as fun as when right. you get oh, yeah, that immediate response. Right, oh yeah, the PC response. version, yeah. yeah. But, so this is kind of cool. So each level that you go through, you have different tasks. You have to sell so many hundreds or thousands. Here, sorry, I got bad reflection. So many hundreds or thousands of dollars worth of flowers to each customer. And then um, I'll back out here and show you another, uh, show you another level. And then you have to grow grapevines, and then you can get... Um, you can create uh, a, like a bakery where you put certain, you have your beehive, you put your honey into like this oven and it makes gingerbread cookies and then you put your grapes into the oven and it makes like raisin cakes. So my, my one question as you sort of, does this game seem to hit a certain target audience? Uh, and that's something I know it's very sort of flowery and Gir gingerbread. Are you, it, tell, are you trying uh, some, to tell uh, me that it's girly? I'm going around, maybe. That might be what I'm trying to hint at, yes. Okay, maybe. But, and which isn't a bad thing. There's more girly. and more casual. It's an extremely casual device, especially on the gaming end. Not all the time, but for the most part. And there should be more games like that. But I'm wondering if 
uh, myself, w would I enjoy it as much as you did? I think you would enjoy okay. it because even <laughs> though I know is that a comment on the game or me, but fair, no, go ahead. Even <laughs> though I know that it is very, like I said, it's very girly in certain aspects. It also is challenging in the fact that you're dealing with weeds taking over your plants. You're dealing with, um, you know, them dying from pests like insects that are eating them and you have to the really challenging part for me is the customer orders these customer orders come in and you can stack them cuz she has different power ups like for example I can show you here she has five or six different kinds of power ups and um, in this level I haven't earned them all yet they have the flyer marketing amazing efficiency patient customer where you can freeze the clock on the order and then way ahead meaning you can stack multiple orders and then a, city, a gift of nature, which means that um, you can uh, you can plant multiple things in the same plots. I believe that's what it is. I don't think I've actually used, used that one. Um, and she, what's kind of interesting is that you kind of have to balance all of these things. You know, on one hand you have to cut the weeds, and then you have to cut the flowers, and then you have to trim them, and then you have to water them, and then you have to deliver them to the customers, and then you have to take the fruit and put it in the dryer and put this, take this out of the oven and. It really is like you're doing seven different tasks at the same right. time. And that's what I think is so engaging about it. It's not like there are certain games I find that you have to do the same kind of puzzles over and over again. Like Angry Birds, for example, can get really frustrating for me when you get into those higher levels when you really are, like you get stuck. You're like, well, how do I do this better? This way the game's always changing. You can customize it. You virtually can plant whatever flowers you want wherever you want on the map. So no one's game is going to be identical. And that's what I think is really great about this app is that you really get to be the master of your own universe. And what makes it so addicting. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, so that's Fiona Flowers. It's a, it's a really cool app. It's only $4.99, so it's not super expensive. It's in HD, so it looks beautiful on the iPad screen. And I played it for five hours in a row, and then another three hours, and then another more couple of hours. And I'm still not done with the game. I just finished the... Um, campaign mode of it, and, but now there's all these, of course, mini games and extras and things like that. So uh, that is my iPad game of the week review, Fiona's Flowers. I suggest you pick it up. I don't think you'll be disappointed. Exciting. And yes. speaking of addicting, do we get to hear the, the TriCaster song now? Is that what oh, we're doing? Oh, yes. yes. I don't know if anyone out there watching has heard this yet. Oh. It is on YouTube. Hopefully you have seen it. We here at This Weekend use a TriCaster to stream live to you. That's how we bring all of our shows to you on thisweekend.com. It's the magic that makes it work. Exactly. And uh, one of the uh, founders of This Weekend, Mr. Mark Jeffrey, who has a show, um, wrote this beautiful song. And we are going to play it for you right now. So enjoy. <laughs> You got a web show you want to create You need something to make you look and sound really great A lightweight, portable broadcast device and For a TV studio you can't be the price TriCaster, TriCaster The web television is a TriCaster TriCaster, TriCaster The web television is a TriCaster Audio mixing and special effects Multi-camera switching digital muscle flex Playback clips on your live remote shoot A chroma key green screen muscle to boot Live production and virtual sets Are streaming like a pro across the internet It's made of awesome and it's full of wind The TriCast is what we use it this way again TriCaster, TriCaster The web television is a TriCaster And it's in my head for the rest of the day. <laughs> awesome. Yes, that is kind of um, thank the, you, thank you, the thank you, Mark theme. Jeffrey. It's a very addicting song, so you'll be singing the TriCaster chorus for the rest for, of the day. You know when you, you'll just know the words try TriCaster try, and muddle off. Uh, did, you, did you like my my uh, my Guitar Hero playing very in nice. that video? Very nice. While lip syncing, two things at once. <laughs> I can't do it. So it was it was pretty funny though because um, we we shot, we shot my segment outside, and so there was like no music so I literally had to like hum it in my head the whole time yeah to like remember what the beat was it was it was an interesting experience but I do really love the way all the videos came together I think it 
Mark, I hate, I, I don't want to give you too many props for it, but it's pretty cool. Yeah, pretty cool. I like it. But uh, speaking of other things that are really cool, it's time for the interview. And so I'm going to go ahead and I let think, you take the reins here, I Jacob. I think they just lost them on Skype. Oh, no, so, really? Um, let, let's do, we can hop into the news and then when I see them sure. pop back up, I'll uh, cut you off rudely okay. and inappropriately. Please do. Just be like, yo, woman, it's oh, time oh, for the maybe, interview. Maybe, maybe. Uh, yeah, let's just go ahead and go to the okay, news. Okay, well, then. we are having some, uh, we just lost our guest on Skype, so we're going to get him back up, as Jacob said. Uh, while we are getting him um, back up Who's in the studio. Who's suing who? Who is suing who? Let's see. Everyone is suing everyone. Yes, this is big news. I don't know if you guys have heard this story. Uh, Motorola is suing Apple for patent infringement, but it turns out it's not just Motorola suing Apple. There's a whole bunch of people suing a whole bunch of other people. I have a diagram here up on my laptop if you guys want to take a look. This is a little ridiculous. If you see all those colored dots, they represent a whole bunch of different companies who are suing who. This orange one here, that's Apple. And then you have Motorola. Microsoft, HTC, Qualcomm, Nokia, Google, Sony Ericsson, Sharp, Kodak, Samsung. I mean, the, this is just a little ridiculous. The, I mean, there's a bunch of little companies that are they're sort of one or two offs, but uh, like Nokia is suing everyone, just about, and almost everyone is suing Apple. Sort of the odd operation that I thought in sort of the sphere we're in, in tablets and a little bit of mobile, is Google, one line, uh, Oracle suing them. And that's about it, which is sort of interesting. Um, that it's more uh, Nokia, Apple, and Kodak really uh, sort of getting in the fray. Well, what's kind of, I, I think the reason, I mean, I think it's, you know, the reason for that is because most of these companies deal with technology and yep. these are patent disputes. Uh, that's what the big one is with Motorola and, and Apple is a patent dispute lawsuit over the iPhone, the iPod Touch, the iPad, and of course the Mac computers that Apple has created. Google doesn't really have any hardware that's, you know, it, at the forefront of the consumer industry now. They have Google TV coming. Right. It's not here yet, so maybe we'll see them and, getting more lawsuits. And they've that's been out, a but. decently good actor with Android. There were some issues when Android first came out with its multi-touch support and whether or not that was sort of infringing on an Apple patent. And they kind of played nice and dumbed it down for a little bit. So it'll be interesting to see how it shakes out. But in the end, it doesn't matter. Millions, you know, and to these companies, millions isn't that much. Millions will change hands between a few. It'll go on forever. And right. but for the most part, iPad will sort of stay the same. Well, exactly. I mean, I think you really hit the nail on the head by saying it's millions, and these companies don't really care about millions. We're and it, about it's about billion dollar companies. So what's a few million yeah. here and there going back and forth between? And each it can one? be potentially more. Apple lost one a little bit ago, and I forgot what it, uh, it was on. And it was it was a hefty sum, but you know, at the same time, it's you know, that's a I don't know your third speeding ticket as opposed to your first. So they'll, yes. they'll live, we'll still get to use the things. It's not much to worry about. And I see Marco is back, so we can, uh, we can shift on over to that. Okay, uh, fantastic. Marco, welcome. Thank you. Uh, like I, I, I sort of said at the beginning, I've been hyping Insta Papers since, I think, episode one, uh, maybe episode two, but it's my, it was my number one favorite app, the one app you had to start. So. Uh, you were at Tumblr in 2008 when you started this. What motivated you to just start Instapaper? Well, it was really to solve just a personal need that I had, which is I had just gotten my iPhone and in late 2007, and I would find a lot of interesting things to read while I was at work and couldn't really read them. And I would have a long train commute every day during which I would have nothing to read. So I built Instapaper to bridge that gap uh, so that I would have an easy way to just temporarily save stuff I found when I was at work so I could read it on the way home. And uh, so you started as, like I mentioned, sort of as a web developer and then transitioned, I think originally as a web app with Instant Paper and then an, you know, full-fledged iPhone app and then the iPad app. And that's, the web world is one of the most open, it's really happy and open source land uh, in development land and to one of the most closed platform in iOS development. How did you sort of find that route and uh, was it an enjoyable one or at least bearable one? Well, when Instapaper first launched, uh, the App Store didn't exist. There was no SDK yet. Um, so I was doing all sorts of hacks to try to get mobile Safari to keep as much yeah. in RAM as possible. Um, this is before HTML5 had database storage and, and things like that that would make it a lot easier today. Um, but at the time, I just needed to find some way to get offline access because on the subway train, you don't have any reception. So 
uh, the the app was really a great thing, and I really didn't care much about it, the lack of openness on Apple's part or anything else. I really just wanted offline access on the iPhone and, uh, and later on the iPad. Um, have you had it? Uh, you you've been on the uh, one of you know, like like you mentioned one of the original on iPhone. You were on the iPad, I think, day one or day two after getting it out. I know I bought it uh, right when I got mine. Uh, have you had any issues with the App Store and sort of your dealings with Apple? They've gotten a lot, lot better, so this question has become less prevalent. But since you've been around a while, I wonder what your impression has been on how the, improve, the uh, approval process has gotten over the time. Well, it's certainly gotten a lot better. They've really fixed a lot of the problems with it. And uh, with the recent publishing of that document about their guidelines, um, that certainly helps a little bit on the openness side. Um, that said, inherently there are issues whenever you're reviewing apps, and I think uh, if you look at the grand scheme of things, some unregulated app marketplaces and the App Store being the regulated marketplace, I think Apple made the right decision in regulating it. And because they are regulating it, there's going to be some negative sides to that uh, that they just can't help. And I think at first we definitely saw them stumble over some of those, but it's certainly gotten better in recent uh, recent months. Um, so uh, in, I actually found out, I started using Instant Paper even outside of the mobile sphere. I just needed something to sort of read later and read there, and then sort of got more into the mobile sphere. And then with my iPad, it sort of really, really makes sense for the iPad. Do you see more web apps going there where there basically there might be a web presence, but it's largely a mobile platform? That's a good question. I think with Instant Paper, I really see a split of, of both, where I see a lot of people do everything on the mobile device. They, they save articles and they read articles on the mobile device. Um, but there's also people who do everything on the web. They save on the web and then they read on the web. And I made it to cross over that line, but it ends up that, that is a much less common use case than expected. Um, and when uh, I, um, Insta Paper is a universal app, so it works on both the iPhone and the iPad. Is there any main your uh, Insta Paper is mostly dealing with text, but is there anything differences you run into when, say, um, working with iPhone versus the iPad? Any main, or is it basically the same thing? Well, the the components are all very similar. So if you know iPhone programming, you'll have no trouble making an iPad app. But in the interface design, it's very very different. Um, you used to have you can fit more than one thing on the screen at a time, really, with the iPad. You have popovers, you have the overlays, um, and, and you have a very frequent use of the uh, external keyboards, which you have to accommodate for in any kind of input forms. Uh, overall, it's it's a lot of very different design decisions that you have to make. And if you, if you apply your iPhone interface to the iPad without much modification, it doesn't really look right. Um, what is your? What's been your biggest gripe uh, working with within the sort of iOS ecosystem? I have, I have what I consider in the back of my head, and it goes for a couple applications. But I'll wait for your answer before I bitch about that. My biggest gripe was really the NDA that that covered it for the first uh, eight months or so, uh, because we can't talk to other developers, and you can't have websites about this platform. And to help to help each other out with code samples and, and discussion of the API, uh, it's very difficult to program. You feel like everyone's alone. Uh, but they lifted the NDA, and, uh, and so that was really my biggest complaint. And that that's now gone. You know, as I said, you can certainly see Apple having stumbled upon certain things along the way here that they've they've slowly fixed. Um, beyond that, uh, there are certain limitations in the API, and not being able to call private methods anymore, um, really ever. Uh, by the term of service, um, ha really limits what a lot of apps can do. But as part of the review system, from Apple's perspective, they had to do this because so many apps would misuse private methods and would crash, and the reviewers would have to review all these submissions that really should not have been submitted anyway. And so the, the, the private methods are being abused, really. And so when you have a review system, you have to apply the same rules to everyone. And in the grand scheme of things, I'm glad does that. So uh, I guess mine, and I'll sort of let th this cat out of the bag. And I don't. I think it makes sense with the ecosystem. I'm not saying it's a mistake on Apple's part. I know why it's there, but it's the integration with uh, mobile Safari, really. And I think it's a great hindrance to Instapaper. You kind of get around it with the book bookmarklets, but it's can be the uh, less uh, graceful process getting that going. And it's really bad for uh, one password. Another app I use a lot. 
Um, do you see any, where do you see, you know, being able to extend mobile Safari or any of the Apple apps like that to a point where you can have a read it later button and it's super easy to install and goes from there? That's a great question. Uh, and yeah, you're right. The, the bookmark installation process is really cumbersome. And uh, that is, is the biggest source of people giving up and not, not finishing the installation process from to paper. Uh, Apple definitely improved that, but um, and there's a number of changes they can make in Mobile Safari that would make it easier. It couldn't be much harder than it is now. Yeah. But the the problem is that it's such a such a relatively small use case. Most apps don't need bookmarklets. Most people don't use bookmarklets, and so it's I, I expect it's never going to be a high enough priority for Apple to actually fix. Yeah, and that makes sense. It's really it's a bummer for like I said, instant paper and really huge one for one password, and you can tell they really want to get it out, but uh, sort of say la vie. So uh, you announced your departure from Tumblr, I guess it's almost about a month now, and when you did it, you mentioned um, you're able to explore opportunities that you hadn't had time to take full advantage of. Could you elaborate a little bit on what those are and sort of the path ahead you see for Instapaper? Sure. So one thing I'm going to be releasing probably next week is is the full API for third-party applications. Uh, Instapaper so far has only had the right API so that applications could add things to your Instapaper account but couldn't read anything back. So you can, for example, have a full featured Instapaper app on Android or BlackBerry um, because the API just wasn't there. So I finally have time where I can focus on things like the API. And I also, um, there are a number of large features that I've wanted to do for a while, things like uh, some kind of content recommendation features that are fairly coding intensive that I just haven't had the time to do. And now I finally have uh, as much time as I need to do those things. Cool. Um, two uh, real quick questions that Lon and I like to ask sort of everyone that's on there. Uh, come January, what is the one feature when uh, the, the job note is given, the Steve note's given, what is the one feature you're hoping above all else out of the iPad 2? Um, I hope it's on Verizon. <laughs> and uh, I, really, I really hope the iPhone is on Verizon as well. That, that, would, be, that would be the best January for Instapaper, I think. Uh, anything that expands iOS's market share is great for all developers of iOS. And uh, certainly being on Verizon would be a very, very good thing for all of us. Yeah. I am I probably would, I'm not, you know, not at up of at t for a while, but just getting more and more people off the network and sort of balancing off would be a great thing. Well, yeah, they said that 23% of iPhone users would leave at t today if they could, if right. Verizon offered the service for iPhones. And it, it, and I do believe, I mean, I have my issues with at t but I've had my issues with all telecoms, and I do believe that once you just balance it out, it's going to get better. It'll take some time, but it's it, like, uh, like Marco said, it's good for the at t members, it's good for people that are on Verizon and sort of dedicated on that and don't want to have to split the telecom bill. Right, exactly. So, Marco, I just had a quick question for you. You said you're going to be doing a lot of coding and some great things for Instapaper in your free time. Are you doing this all by yourself? Do you have, like, assistance or anything, or are you just one-man band? Uh, well, I have somebody who edits the editor's picks on the front page uh, called Give Me Something to Read, uh, but uh, that's, that's the only other uh, employee that I have. And everything else is just me. And I, I do used to hire out the design work because I'm a really terrible designer. Oh, oh yeah, really? Well, uh, you don't have to sell yourself short like that. We're not going to call you out for being a bad designer. I and, mean, come on, you did you did Instapaper. And, That's awesome. And part of the joy of Instapaper is that it can, it's minimalist because it needs to be. You know, you don't need everything else distracting. So. Uh, it's a happy side effect. Yeah. <laughs> well, and that also helps you make it universal as well. If you keep it simple, and yeah. you, like you said, you don't have to worry about, you know, all the different complications that arise with right. the design and, and transferring between the iPhone and the iPad. Absolutely. Right. Uh, so my last question is just, uh, what is your, I don't know, favorite app or two for whatever reason? Pick your on the uh, what's iPad specifically, other than of course Instapaper. Well, I know it was mentioned earlier, but uh, Plants vs. Zombies is really excellent. And uh, I, I suspect that has probably sold more iPads than any other app, including <laughs> Apple's apps. That, Definitely. Yeah, I, yeah. Well, I've spent hours it on was that game. Absolutely. <laughs> I went in, I've told the story, I went into the Apple store, was not going to buy one. I was with my dad who was buying one, and I was going to help him. You know, uh, you know, navigate, and I wanted to play around with it because I'm just an Apple dork like that. And it was the MLB app and the Plants vs. Zombies. Five minutes doing those two, I'm in. I bought it, um, and 
happy user ever since. <laughs> Absolutely. No, it's funny that you bring that up because I did a walkthrough for Mahalo Video Games, and that was really my first experience with iPad gaming was when I, you know, was loaned one by somebody, and they're like, here, take this and play Plants vs. Zombies. And I and I, I was like, I was hooked. I was yeah. sold. Because before, um, before I was an iPad owner, I was like, Meh, I don't know. It's kind of expensive, and I have all the consoles for gaming. I don't need it. Yeah. And then, when, like you said, once it's that, in uh, your hands, you're like, okay, it might make why, sense for what was some I waiting people, for? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Well, um, awesome. Thank you very much, Marco. Uh, feel free to stick around and you know pitch in. If, uh, I don't think there's anything. It wasn't an earth-shattering news uh, week, news-wise, but there might be something you just want to weigh on. And uh, feel free. Great. Well, it's been nice to be here. Thank you. All right. Uh, so back to the news. But before I get to the news, oh. actually. Um, we need to talk about Gazelle.com, another one of our awesome sponsors been here at This forever. Week in iPad. Yeah. yeah. Thank them for that. Awesome. And it's good to have, it's not only one to have a sponsor for a long, long time, but a sponsor that actually offers a good service. And, Absolutely. And a universal service. Everyone has this problem. So. Yes, yeah, so if you guys um, haven't sold anything on uh, Gazelle.com yet, um, you're behind the times. Because we all have that stuff. I'm pulling the website up here on the laptop. We all have stuff that we have sitting around. I know for one, I have three old cell phones that I'm trying to get all my paperwork and stuff together so they're worth more on, on Gazelle. I'm like, I know I have the original box somewhere. Um, Gazelle.com is a great site, and they are offering all of our This Week in uh, viewers a uh, promo code. It's TWI5, and it gets you a 5% bonus back on your trade ins. And they take cash for gadgets, as you see right here on their homepage. You can just type something in. So, let's say, for example, I have a PlayStation 2 sitting around at home, you know, and you just type in whatever you have, and it brings up everything that you can sell and it's a good way to clear out some space in your closets and make yourself some extra cash so you can go buy new gadgets because that's the beauty of the tech world is that there's new fun stuff coming out all the time but unfortunately it is expensive and Gazelle is here to help you put some of that cash back in your pocket while recycling it's good for the planet don't throw it away sell it on gazelle.com have you sold anything on Gazelle? I have not I've gone over this with Lon as I'm a hoarder of everything I keep boxes I keep you know, newspapers, I keep all of that. And so I, you know, I probably have my original, original blue Nokia I had when I was eighth grade. I'm pretty sure I do. It's in a oh, box. really? In my top closet drawer. And I just can't get rid of them. I don't know what it is. That said, um, when it, it's getting, mobile spaces especially is getting the thing where you're not replacing every three or four years where you start to develop. I, I, this might make me out to be creepier than I actually am, or creepy <laughs> as creepy as I am. But sentimental attachment to that blue phone I made, you know, my first call to a girlfriend ever and all that. Oh, that's but sweet. But when I'm starting to replace my iPad every year and my iPhone every year, it's eh, whatever. It's just that dumb phone. Uh, and so I'm so I am. D it depends on what the iPad 2 is. If it goes, and we're going to talk about this a little bit later, 7 inches and replaces the 9 inch, I actually might keep this one to have a bigger screen sort of around. So I haven't yet, but I've uh, talked to people who I've had, and they just can't say enough about how easy it is. And just they take of care of every step for you. The only thing you are providing is the you know the goods, and they know that, and they want to take care of all the hassle um, outside of that for you. So. Right. Well, that's what's so great about a site like Gazelle versus doing like eBay uh, or something like that. That's that you have to do all the work. Right. Gazelle takes that out of your hands and does it for you. Over a hundred thousand people have used Gazelle to safely rid themselves of unwanted gadgets and earn some cash while doing it. So make sure you write down our promo code TWI five so you can get a five percent bonus back on your uh, trade-in goods. And they do everything, cell phones, computers, uh, they even do DVDs, video games. And, uh, we say it every time, just uh, the 5% won't apply to media, uh, video That's games true, or movies, yes. but they will do it, which is you know a great service, and uh, I can almost, I can't guarantee it, obviously, because I don't know your local music shop, but you, or music or movie shop, but you're probably going to get a better price on Gazelle than you're going to get at your local CD trading thing. So. Absolutely. I mean, they give you like two bucks. Because they you know have more I mean? people to sell it to. That's the, you know. The power the, of the internet. The joys of the <laughs> inner tubes. You know. Absolutely. So uh, make sure you guys check out gazelle.com. So going back to the news, uh, this is kind of a little interesting story that I found. Um, it's about a hacker, or a hack from a hacker, about Chrome OS running on the iPad. Now we have a little video here of uh, the guy actually 
trying to bring up the Chrome OS on the iPad. And it's not a remote desktop thing. This is the real deal. You guys can go ahead and play the video now if you have it. Do we have it? Maybe we don't have it? There we go. There we go. done by the hack was actually done by a seasoned Chrome OS coder named Hexa and this was on YouTube and so it's pretty pretty sure that it's this is a real hack so it, what do you think about this it'll be interesting to see if Chrome replaces you know Red Hat or Linux or you know Gen 2 as the can I put it on a you know can I put X on Y it used to be I I think the second generation iPod, someone got Linux on it. And it's more of a, look what I did. I did it as opposed to anything useful uh, just because the systems are so different and Chrome OS is just, you know, not even a real thing yet. It's so native that it's more, l let me show that, you know, the iPad, one, the iPad is vulnerable, ha, 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 and all of that. So I don't take much out of it um, just because... I think we're a while away before we can actually get, say, a dual boot and to a tablet machine. Yeah, Where it's absolutely. actually running both. Yeah, well, Marco, as a coder and someone who designs apps, what do you think about this? Is it easy to hack is something like this? Do you think this is complicated? Could you do something like this? I probably couldn't. I don't really have the skills for that. It, the bigger thing is I just wouldn't. I mean, it, it's hard <laughs> to justify. It, it's a cool thing to do, uh, you know, to hack into that, to say you did, but... Uh, I just wouldn't have the time, really. Yeah. And I'm, I'm perfectly happy with, uh, with iOS as it is on the iPad. Yeah. It's just like, who, I, I wonder who buys a you know, $500 plus device and goes, eh, I'm just going to put Chrome on it and make it almost useless, I would be you know, guessing. Just not that Chrome OS is useful, useless, but getting it on the iPad and all the limitations that have to come with that just seems like someone got bored. Yeah, I, I, the more that you say that, the more that makes sense that it was like, hey, look what I can do, kind yeah. of like give me a pat on the back for being able to do it. But And if they did it quickly, I'm sure someone will try and do it in an Apple store so they can get you know more you know laughs out of it. But other than that. Well, I can for one say that I would have no idea even where to begin to yeah. try to hack <laughs> <laughs> anything like this on the iPad. I don't even know how to code. It's not uh, in my forte. I actually tried to take a class once because right when I first started getting into doing more uh, reporting on tech stuff, I was like, oh, I really want to know more about it. Maybe I should take you know, a class on how to write code. And I, I literally like got the handbook, and I was like, no way. There's no way I can do this. One line is C++, and you're out. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. I mean, Marco, how long did it take you to learn how to create code or do write code? Well, it took uh, most of my middle school and high school career being a nerd and not doing what everyone else was doing in middle school and high school. Uh, so it's, it's a little bit of an unfair comparison. Uh, but uh, for, for specifically for iOS, uh, the way every camera learns uh, how it learns a new platform, really, is by having a really good reason why they want to make something on that platform, having, having a really good idea and having the drive to make it. And that's what I had. I was already operating the Instagram web service, and I really wanted that offline access. And so I just kind of stumbled through it until I figured it out. Did you have, how much formal training did you have on sort of non either dynamic, I, I know, uh, I think Tumblr is mostly written in PHP, if I remember off the top of my head, non dynamic or sort of more software development as opposed to web development? Uh, most, of, most of my previous work before Tumblr was in uh, more low level languages like C. Okay. And so PHP is kind of, kind of easy <laughs> for <Yeah>. me. <laughs> um, it's, which is one of the reasons why I like it. It's very easy to be very productive in PHP. Yeah, no, but, absolutely. Uh, for the most part, all my previous work was in C. Yeah, sorry. No, no, talk, no that no, I, interruption. I, I think <laughs> I think it's definitely interesting. That's why we have him here to so ask him questions that we didn't think of earlier on in the show. So um, we're gonna go ahead and move on to the next news story because we have uh, still have to get to Planet of the Apps oh later on in the show. Um, this next story, I think everyone's heard about. It's been going around. Apple could sell 11 million iPads this year, and actually, I've heard estimates as high as 45 million iPads. And no. I was like, and I was like, who is yeah. <laughs> who is buying these iPads? Yeah. And that must be worldwide. And it's interesting though. Obviously, there's gonna be a big push for holiday season, which is right around the corner. We're like a month away 
from uh, Black Friday, a month and a couple weeks away. And if I, you know, hadn't started working at this weekend, I would be asking my parents for an iPad. Yep. But luckily I got one sooner. So that's awesome. But, I mean, what do you think? Do you think the, the, the iPad is really going to do, like, almost 20 million? They're saying it could do. Uh, I think 11 or 12 probably sounds right. Uh, early First first estimates, eh, 6, and then it became you know 11, and there were a bunch of naysayers. That's not going to happen. I think that, I mean, the one thing that they'll point to is that, oh, the, you know, the iPad 2 is going to reveal in January. It's going to probably be available in March or in April. But I think so many of the people... That's only an effect to the people who already own these things. People who know, you know, have Steve Notes circled on their calendars with hearts around it. They've bought their iPad, they've come and gone. So these are the much more casual users who have seen enough of it on TV, have, you know, probably played around with their, you know, uh, geeky nephew's iPad and understand what it can be. Um, and I've mentioned a few, a uh, few times, I believe in the testament, the iPad replaces the second computer in the household, not the first. And there's probably a lot of people who, hey, $500, I could use another device like this sitting on the couch and stuff like that. So I think the holiday uh, sales force, especially as it gets spread to Target and to Walmart and all these other stores, it's going to be it's going to be big. I don't know. I think they've probably caught up enough to where it's not going to be this, what I say, Power Rangers level of I can't find it. Right. But it'll be uh, it'll be a hot enough seller um, as tablet computer, you know, makes more and more of a sort of push forward. Yes, and I mean, obviously the iPad is going to have some competition in the upcoming months, and especially, you know, in early next year when more tablets from other companies are coming out. But I think that, you know, Apple it, kind it, of has that proprietary built-in customer base of all of its Mac users, because, I mean, I have a Mac laptop and an iPod right. and an iPad. Samsung should be the holiday season, but I think that's the only one that I have I have any care in, like, um, uh, re uh, research uh, RIMs is going to be uh, after 2011. All of the uh, Windows 7 ones are going to be after 2011. So I think that the Samsung Galaxy is the only one that uh, we're hopefully going to get here, get to play around with it, and be able to do a you know, contrast and compare. And that's definitely the, a big plus for the Galaxy. They get, get to have this big push. Here's this new thing you can buy as opposed to this thing that can't, you know, you've been hearing about all year long. So. Right, absolutely. Well, and Marco, I wanted to ask you a question about this. As a, uh, a developer of apps, are you concerned about having to change, you know, the way that you develop apps or change your app to fit on these new tablets that are coming out? Not at all, because I don't plan to support them at all. <laughs> uh, You're like, yeah, iPad it's, it's or similar, die. <laughs> right. It's a similar question as, uh, as supporting Android. And the reality is, I, I, one of the reasons why I'm making the API public is that I have no desire to support platforms I don't use. Uh, I don't think I'm qualified to make an app for a platform I don't use, because I wouldn't know what's good on that platform and how things should work. And whereas I, I, I'm familiar with those things in iOS, because I was using iOS before apps could exist. And so, and all these tablets too, I mean, you don't hear regular people saying, oh, I can't wait for the Galaxy to come out this this winter. That's that's <laughs> very yeah. true. Sorry, yes, I'm not a regular person. Well, Another thing to consider is that the iPad and iOS in general is really terrible for multiple user management. And so anytime you, you have families now who keep fighting over the iPad to play Plants vs. Zombies on their account, or, or even just if more than one people want to read mail in the mail app, you need two iPads for that. And I think that's, it's convenient for Apple. I, I don't think it's planned to, for them to not support multiple users, but I think they're conveniently leaving it that way because it's going to sell a lot more devices this Christmas. Yeah, no, app, that's a very great point that you make. I guess I never thought about getting my friends an iPad to play games with me. Where I'm like it, all like solo on my iPad. Where it's really hit me is being the token Apple dork that I am. I bought an Apple TV last week uh, at the Apple store, and I noticing that for home sharing, I, I wanted to just, uh, we have one, me and my roommate have one Apple TV, and I want his, his phone to be able to control it, my phone to be able to control it. And both our libraries to lot to do that, but to do that, I have to authenticate my iTunes account on both the computers, and then technically, oh, yeah. if he, you know, wanted to drunkenly purchase, you know, all of RuPaul's Drag Race uh, off of iTunes, <laughs> he could totally do it, and it gets charged to my card. So um, it, clearly, it, and it's a great point that it's going to move more devices, but it is something they're How going to have to. How did you come up with that example? RuPaul's Drag Race. It is, in fact, uh, my roommate's one of my roommate's favorite shows. I wow. did not pull that out of nowhere. <laughs> I don't know. Actually, time. I have no idea if it's on iTunes or not. So uh, I'll ask Noah to go check. Um, very, very funny. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm sorry that threw me for a loop. I forgot that RuPaul even had a show. Yeah, on Logo, I think. 
Oh yeah, oh, that makes sense now logo that I think e. about it. I can't remember which, but. So it would make sense if it was on Logo. Yeah. I don't well. know if E could support a RuPaul show. I'm sure they could. So we do have one more news story before we get to Planet of the Apps. And um, this, of course, doesn't seem like it's, like Jacob said earlier, it's been kind of a slow news week. And it is a this token is a, what will be an iPad 2 story. Right, absolutely. The 7-inch iPad to have retina display, 125 gigabytes of memory, which is pretty that, impressive. That actually, I think, up. is the first, like, the 7-inch thing, the retina display, and the uh, micro or mini USB port, that's, like, every report ever, and the front camera. They don't even bother to spell out the front camera. Yeah, obviously, it's going to have a front camera. Um, the 128 thing is interesting to me, especially if they can cram it into a you know a smaller body. Um, that would be nice. Uh, like as I've said, I don't really care about the front camera thing. I would never use it. Um, so that'd be interesting. But at the same time, I'll say what I say when we talk about competing uh, iPads is show me the tablet. I don't really like talking about rumors. I can. It's. I don't want to spend an hour thinking, oh, what would I buy one or not? And then you know Steve Jobs comes out and says, and one more thing, you know. It'll do your cooking for you. And I'm like, oh, okay, game over. I'll go buy it. So, eh. These stories will come out. We will talk about them. And then it'll do something completely we're not expecting. So. Well, geez, way to just take the wind out I, of my sails. I keep doing this. <laughs> Lon, is so, Lon used to get so upset at me that it's like, here's a new tablet coming out. Or here's, a, here's the new specs coming out. I'm like, and you're like, ah. I don't want to talk about rumors. Uh, no, I, 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 <laughs> I will talk about them all in. I just think it's a, a little pointless. Well, I, would, for one, would love to see them put 128 gigs. That I would way, love I it. could I actually would... sync my entire library. I don't sync everything. I don't do an auto sync with my iPad because I have so much music. I have almost 30 gigs just of music, so that would take up almost all my space on my hard drive. One's interesting to me is that I, uh, when I, iPods first came out and the, the, you know, they got to that 64, and back then that could fit all my music because I was using an awful bit rate and all of that. But then they started, you know, and then they got bigger and bigger, and I would always buy the biggest because that would be what would fit my library. But then they went to the more touch lines with the 8, and then 8 and 16, and 16 and 32, and now 32 and 64, 16, 30, uh, and 32. And that, I, my library with movies especially now is so big that it's like, I'm just going to the smallest one. And I just know, I ha if I can't have everything, I don't need, I just need 16, it's fine. Um, but it's interesting, if they get to 128, I'm right around that ratio where if I, it can fit all my music. Couldn't fit all my movies and stuff. But if it could fit all my music, I might buy the most expensive model uh, to fit it all in, as opposed to you know worrying about what you know. Yeah, hey, manually syncing is never fun. I want to just be able to click the sync button and have you know mm -hmm. iTunes take care of everything right. for me. I don't want to have to pick between you know. I'm, tr I'm trying to embarrass <laughs> myself now. And I can't think of which R. Kelly. There we go. There's a music <laughs> artist. I love that's embarrassing. Which you know do I want? Uh, TB3 Reloaded, or do I want Untitled? I can't pick. Wow, I want both. I just got some insight into yeah, you. A little Jacob bit. Jacob the R. Kelly fan. Very interesting. Giant. Giant. You watch, you watch RuPaul, you have your first cell phone, and you like R. Kelly. Yeah, well. It's okay. There things, it is. Things we've never known. But I do want to hear what you have to say, Marco, about these rumors. Are you with Jacob? Are you like, I don't care until I hear the hard facts? Or, or do you kind of like speculating? Well, just, I think there's two sides of this. One is that uh, it's, it'd be very inconvenient for the developers and for Apple, for OS maintenance and everything, if there was a new size of an iPad. Uh, so that that's one, one one pretty good reason why it might not exist. The other thing is, all of these rumored specs that we keep hearing about are specs of other tablets that are coming out, and it's very likely they're based on some kind of slightly misattributed or misunderstood component source rumor that's actually components for other tablets. That's a really interesting point it, you just brought up. I guess that I never thought about it well, that way before. Well, the interesting thing is, is that that's you know it's it, it's a great point, and you can't really buy into it. The one thing that I, has been consistent is this seven-inch thing. Every rumor that's come out for the last three or four months that we've talked about on the show has said it's gonna it will either be seven inches, and then through the pixel density, it all the display will end up being I don't I don't know what they would do. You know, size is size is size. Um, or it would be an additional one, and right. people have sort of given up saying, "Nah, it's going to stay being you know 9.7, uh, which is what I think it is now." I wanted to. I don't want seven inches. Like I, 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 I know. Come on, I'm now every man wants seven no, inches. Oh, nine, I prefer 9.7. I couldn't, 9. I couldn't 7. resist. 9.7 is better. <laughs> Bigger the better. I. It's it's not. If they uh, they can make it lighter, I'd like that. But size wise, it's like this is not uncomfortable in my hands. No, um, I definitely I can hold it in agree one with hand. you. Uh, so maybe if they can make it lighter, but I'm 
I'm with Marco. I'm against seven inches. I've just given up debating it because every rumor we've had has right. said it's going to be that. So of course, absolutely. So and on that note, it's time for Planet of the Apps. You maniac! Damn you! God damn you all to hell! Don't download it, Bond. You might not like how it runs. Oh, it makes me smile every time. I can't help it. Uh, today, our vertical is health and wellness. We decided that, you know, we're getting Jacob to... Jacob needs to lose a little bit of weight. <laughs> no. So. It's getting to that time of year where you start drinking more, eating more, going to more parties. So we thought health and wellness would be, it'd be a good time for us to, to show you guys some of our health and wellness oh, apps that we I'm like. So in. I'm going to go ahead and let you start. Okay. You go first. Uh, in the grand tradition of law, of the dearly departed, or I, he's like ten feet away. I shouldn't say dearly departed. <laughs> uh, Lana Harris. Um, I have cho I went through the, the the category. I think it's health and fitness uh, on iTunes and found a popular app that had a really bad rating. Uh, and oh my God, is this app terrible? I think it's called. Let me check real quick. It's yoga something. Fitness yoga HD. Um, it does support uh, portrait and landscape, and that's the only nice thing I can say about it. It's free, I guess that's another nice thing, but um, it be this, is, this is what you get, uh, kids. It, uh, you load it up, um, there's no intro screen, it is nine images like this, and you would think, okay, they're teaching you how to do the pose, there's a giant ad up top and an ad when you start the app, but they're teaching you, step one, do this, step two, do this. And then here's a picture that would kind of resemble the pictures do not match the poses at all. These are just random silhouetted pictures of people doing yoga. Uh, the pose one, for instance, says step one, lie on your back, and we have a person doing sort of a, you know, bangles, Egyptian That's a warrior move, pose. I guess. Uh, <laughs> I don't know very much about yoga. I know a few of the yoga poses. Point, so, I never got into the whole yoga craze. Uh, the language, there's grammatical errors on it. Uh, it's poorly formatted. Uh, it is Awful, and yet people keep. I don't. I don't. I. It must be the most recent app uh, about yoga. So when you search for yoga, it comes up really soon. So people are downloading it, and that's why it's really popular. Or you think it's really downloaded. popular cause, just because it's free? No, 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 no. I think uh, according to iTunes, at least iTunes yeah. says it was like it was a the number five app. I think in this category. Oh wow! Uh, and it is truly spectacularly awful. Um, <laughs> Yeah, that's all I can say. Uh, but it was fun. I'm going to try and keep that tradition going. I will try and review one bad app a week. <laughs> okay, good. Well, I'm going to go on to an app that I think is really good. It's called um, it's called Diet and Fitness Tracker. It's by Spark People. When you get to the um, when you get to the um, home screen here, this is what it looks like. And what's really cool about this app, it, it reminds me a lot of another app that I love called Lose It. Now, but Lose It is only for the iPhone and the iPod. So this one is specifically for the iPad. Now on this home screen here, um, I've already set up my account, but when you originally start it, you put in um, your age, your height, and your weight, because you can't track your calorie goals unless you are honest, and it's on your iPad, so yeah. don't lie, don't say that you're 10 pounds lighter than you are. Because that'll throw off your it's just water throw weight. Off everything. Yeah. So as you can see on the on the uh, left hand side here. They have um, the home button, and they have food. This is where you enter in everything that you eat. Now, I have uh, I was kind of slacking today because I had a really busy morning this morning. But what's, what's neat is that you hit this add food button, and let's say I want to search for something. Like, I had um, tuna and crackers for lunch today. So you type in tuna, and then you can search for foods that I've manually entered, and then you can also search for foods that have been entered by other members that are using this. So here you have a whole bunch of different options here. So l here it is right here, bumblebee tuna in, wa in, in water. Oh, I hit the wrong button. <laughs> so you click on it just like that, and you choose your serving size, and you can look at the nutritional info, and it gives you all of the info that's come. This comes right from the label, which is really awesome. So if you like throw something away and you forgot to write it down, it's all right in here. And then you choose which meal you want to add it to. So I had it for lunch. And then you hit add now, and now it's in your daily calorie count, which is kind of cool. So then when you hit your home screen, it tells me how many calories I can have for the day and then how far I've gotten towards that calorie count. So this is really great in tracking if you're maybe just trying to lose a couple pounds. And I've always been a firm believer that 
Food journaling is the easiest way to lose weight because once you start writing down everything that you're eating, oh, right. you realize exactly. I did have exactly. a slice of cake every day this week. I forgot about that. It's easy. To, it's easy to forget, especially things that are really calorie dense, candy bars, anything like that. Well, and the thing that people really overlook is condiments, butter, mayonnaise, mm. salad dressing. But I had a, so it was covered with. So you know the. <laughs> gallon of ranch I'm pouring on my yeah. little bit of salad, not so much. <laughs> Two no. tablespoons of ranch is about 180 know. calories I and 10 grams of fat. And that's for like light ranch. I'm just saying, if you guys are out there wondering how you can help with diet and fitness, this is a really great one. As I, um, you know, some of the other things are, of course, you can put in your exercise, you can add exercise. Let's say, um, <laughs> I love that the first thing at the top, I didn't even notice that before, is acting as, as exercise. That's kind of funny. So let's just pick running, right? Let's say I go for a nice little short three minute run. <laughs> like really three minutes. Okay, let's do 15. We'll do a 15 minute run. And then I go to add now. So that means I burned 218 calories. I mean, I didn't ranch. run for 15 minutes yet. Three so. teaspoons of ranch. It's exactly. So you just burned off the ranch in your salad. Hooray. So what, what's, it's cool though, because it has it shows you your calories burn and that includes the um, the exercise that you add in. So this is a really awesome app. It's really easy to use. It has reports for you. You can have a, a, a synced online account with Spark People. So you can check it from your computer or your iPhone or your iPad. So it's it's a really it's a really great app. I really like it. And it's uh, free awesome. on top of that. Free, free. Is, free is good. Free is happy. So uh, my uh, next app and last app is, is that gluten free? I. Uh, Jeff Ammons, who used to be on This Week in Mobile and is a co-worker of mine at uh, Mahalo.com, uh, is a firm believer in caveman dieting, uh, the uh, paleo, paleolithic diet. Uh, one paleolithic? Of the paleolithic. You don't eat things that mm. have you didn't pick up, basically. It's oh, okay. That's me interesting. Meat, meat, fruit, veggies. Right. Uh, Something maybe. that you basically could go out in nature and just grab and eat. Basically. I nut, get it. Nuts, fruit, vegetables, meat. And so one of the things you can avoid on that is wheat or gluten. Uh, I also have a friend whose wife is you know, has gluten allergies, so um, for them, I think I thought I'd review it. Uh, the information on it is um, pretty spectacular. Oh, there we go. Uh, it's just so this uh, the is it gluten free original app is uh, basically stuff you would buy at a grocery store. And they have another app that I think is only iPhone right now, which is if you're eating out, you know. Does my Arby's sandwich have wheat? Yes, yes, it does. Um, <laughs> but you can I think search, everything at Arby's has wheat. Uh, and delicious cheese. Um, curly fries, man. It's all about the curly fries. I don't fries. want to think about it anymore. <laughs> so you can go by category, and then it goes there. You can go by brand. You can search. The um, the information is really great, and they all, uh, if they haven't checked a particular, like I was looking for Reese's Peanut Butter Cups, and they were like, hey, we checked this back in June. It's September now. It might Things might have changed. Right. Uh, you should probably not use this information anymore. So information's great. That said, I don't know if it needs to be an iPad app at all. I believe it's five dollars, and uh, it's um, it's uh, portrait only. Uh, doesn't work landscape. There's no. There's nothing on here that jumps out at you and says this is something that um, needs to be on the iPad. That takes up all the space. That is really well designed. Is clearly thought through. They clearly probably just took their iPhone app and blew it up. Um, and you know, probably charge you know, a couple bucks extra. Um, so really, uh, yeah, five dollars is really expensive. So I and I again for information, I feel you probably just Google real quick. Um, Absolutely. So uh, I, I'm iffy to recommend it. If you needed an ac absolutely categorical resource and you can't, you know, you have the Wi-Fi iPad and you don't know if you're going to have access to the internet. It you know it's I, it's funny thing it's five dollars it's so expensive. I guess uh, if you have money to blow and you're looking well, up for a way still, to five dollars isn't that expensive. It's sort of funny that we've it's come to this part where five dollars is this like oh, I don't know. Uh, it's like that right at that stepping point um, where I don't know if I want to spend it so much money. Whereas you know I'd spend sixty dollars on the new Madden or something like that. Yeah, but you can get Fiona's flowers for five dollars. That's true. Why would you want to know about gluten when you can plant flowers? Filling <laughs> orders and doing all sorts of things. So uh, if you uh, have a gluten allergy and you need an offline resource, uh, use it. Otherwise, eh, maybe skip and just Google around. Yeah. All right, cool. Well, I have one more to add. It's the WebMD app for the iPad. If you guys are familiar with WebMD.com, this is just a really great touch interface 
for exactly what the website does without having to. I feel now when I go to the site, there's just so much going on on the, on the homepage. So this is great. Let's say you're at work, like I'm here at the This Weekend office, and I'm like feeling like maybe I'm getting sick, I have a fever, it has the symptom checker, it has drugs and treatments. You can set up your own profile, as you can see here. I'm not going to go through that. First aid information, and really the one that's great is the local health listings. Let's say you're out of town somewhere and you are uh, visiting someone for the holidays, let's say, because holidays are right around the corner, and you need to go see a doctor because you sprained an ankle or you have a fever and you think you're getting the strep throat or something terrible. What you can do is um, you can look up uh, doctors, which is really cool. So let's say I want to look up an urgent care, right, because everyone needs to know where an urgent care is near their house, so we'll search. And so what it'll do is it uses your current location and then it searches for urgent cares. And it zoomed way out. I don't and know why I did that. no results found. You don't get urgent care, oh, not in America. Oh no, Santa Monica doesn't like urgent care. So maybe I need to search for our specific, a specific name. How about we do this instead? We'll search for dermatology. Because that's the only specialty I know how to spell. <laughs> and see if it works. This worked when I was at home. Man, maybe it can't get my location. All right, so don't count that. But the other things about it are pretty neat. It, this is also another free app, because I'm a big fan of free apps, because yeah. I like getting stuff for free. Yeah. Um, and uh, it's pretty cool. The symptom checker is really the thing that's the coolest about WebMD. You know, you get paranoid. I know a lot of people yeah. online kind of get paranoid about Is this their normal? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Am I supposed to? So, so I don't know, what do you think? Uh, it looks, I mean, free apps that have information like that in provided in a way, there's no reason not to have them unless you're, you know, a clutter freak. I, I, like, I tend to get, like, we'll yeah. do, I recently did my closet cleaning after, you know, all of these Planet of the Ass weeks. We did educational games where I have these, like, you know, games meant for five-year-olds, and after I have beaten them thoroughly, you know, and triumphantly, I have deleted them off the iPad. But really, there's so much space, and I have so much space on mine, I just keep things like around. And a symptom checker, you might as well. Exactly. Why not? And look at that. We are out of time. Can Ooh. you believe it? It just flew right yeah, by. Yeah, that was exciting. I do want to thank Marco again for being on the show with us. It was so great to talk to you and hear about Instapaper and Tumblr and uh, I know Jacob for sure and yeah. myself are looking forward to your my future dev, projects. My dev crush is on the show. I'm so excited. Thank you again. <laughs> Thank you. He, he, he was really cute here. before the show. He was all nervous. He's like, oh my gosh, he's oh coming God, on oh the my show. God, oh my God, it's oh my Margo. God. Yeah. So thank you again so much for being on the show, and please, we'd love to have you back sometime. If you would ever at all be interested, you are more than welcome to come back at any time. Thank you so much. It's been fun. Great, fantastic. Well, I have to make sure I thank our sponsors again, Gazelle.com. If you guys haven't sold your electronics, games, media, anything that is tech-related, go to Gazelle.com. Don't forget our promo code TWI5. Sell your stuff, get some cash, buy new stuff, Gazelle.com. And, of course, Hover, TWI.Hover.com. If you are waiting to start a website, stop waiting around. You can get domains for just 5 bucks. You can get a 10% off if you use our special site. That's TWI.Hover.com. Or if you're on another service and you're sick of it being uh, ugly and crufty and hard to work with, uh, transferring is also really easy on the Hover. So. Absolutely. I have uh, This Week in Video Games coming up at 6.30, so if you guys want to stick around for that, we have a new co-host this, uh, this week, and it's a really cute girl. So uh, you've probably seen her before. She was actually on the show last week. Um, so if you guys didn't see the show last week, I'm going to keep it a surprise. We have some cool new segments. And uh, what do we have planned for next week? Anything nothing, fun? Nothing planned. Uh, uh, I'm at Jacob Birch, J-A-C-O-B-B-U-R-C-H at Twitter. If you uh, just wanted to recommend a vertical for Plan of the Apps or wanted to make sure we cover something. I actually got an email a couple of weeks ago that I haven't gone through yet. I have noted, but just haven't been able to put in the show with a bunch of recommendations. So we'll probably uh, throw things on the there. Uh, but otherwise, it'll be a surprise. Yes, fantastic. I love surprises. Hooray. And you can find me, Andrea Renee, at Andrea Renee on Twitter. Or you can email me, Andrea, at This Weekend. Again, you know, app recommendations are always welcome. There are so many apps out there. We can't um, possibly find them all. Yeah. So um, please do send us your thoughts and emails and everything else, and uh, come back and tune in again next week. So Sounds good. I guess that's it. Goodbye.